munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie. Welcome back to the channel. Today's intake story is a surrender intake. For those of you who are new, welcome. I run a small mammal rescue in the state of Washington with my volunteers, 501c3 status, and we rescue hamsters, gerbils, and mice, and sometimes other species, mainly those three. Today is a gerbil intake, which is fantastic because we don't really talk about, at least me, doesn't really talk about gerbil intakes or rescues here. And unfortunately, it's just poor timing. There's always a lot of intakes or rescues, so I don't get to go through all the rescues that I want to. I'm not able to just film, edit, record, all of the intakes. So there is some gerbils that you might have heard, but only on Instagram, not on YouTube. So today's intake is a surrender for coconut and chestnuts. So I have intake notes right here because it's been a month since we took them in. They are a year and a half old male gerbils. Coconut is the black one, and chestnut is the agouti. Previous owners had them for a little over a year because she mentioned she had them after they were born. More than likely she got them from someone that had an accidental litter. This owner reached out to us previously to surrender gerbils I guess at that time we weren't taking them in but we just made kind of like a little note that they did inquire previously to surrender different gerbils and these gerbils were the ones they were surrendering we also touched base with another rescue and it turns out that they were trying to surrender gerbils to them as well not so sure if it was the same gerbils or not but we do like to check with our surrounding partnered rescues to see if someone had previously inquired or if they were currently surrendering gerbils because we've had issues with people trying to surrender and or adopt at the same time of trying to to reach out and inquire with another rescue. It gets really messy, it's really bad. So we'd like to at least touch base with nearby rescues. Uh, they surrendered with a 55 gallon tank and bedding and supplies. They were kept in good care, except for large mesh wheel with double stands. I do want to get into that a little bit later, but it's really cool because this surrender intake did have a 55 gallon tank that they donated to us. We don't use 55 gallons at the rescue. However, they are still inside of their 55 gallon tank. I am going to probably move them into a 40 gallon tank because it's easier to store 40s than it is 50s. 50s, if you guys aren't aware, is very long and thin in length, but they're very tall. So it does make a good tank for gerbils to use, especially if you have different layers and portions, which is what this owner did. This owner had exceptional care for their gerbils, really cool setup. And the last note that I wrote was surrender due to ongoing medical and disability. Well, they did mention that they were having issues. So I feel like this is a good reason to surrender just because to us this is top priority. This is more so needs to be surrendered rather than someone that just got bored, didn't really want to have their responsibility for longer or saying, hey, I don't feel like we're connecting. I want to give you this hamster. And that's something that we're no longer gonna be doing. We want the in need of animals to find appropriate care because rescues are limited right now. If you guys aren't aware, rescues are just full. And if people keep impulse buying and then regretting their decision making and then trying to rehome to rescues, which is crazy because maybe you should have thought rescue first, why are we always the dumping ground for these guys? It's ridiculous. But in this situation, this person had ongoing medical and disability needs. And so they made the best decision, which is trying to find a safe place for these gerbils while they can try to manage their life, which is totally fine. The homing has just stopped. We have not had any adoptions this month and we had one adoption last month. And it's really heartbreaking when I keep seeing people say, oh yeah, go to a pet store. Don't don't go to a pet store. It's really bad. They treat their animals like crap behind the scenes. Not all pet stores are knowledgeable. Not all pet stores have control. I mean, even with when I was working at a pet store, I did not have full control over what I can and cannot do. It's very hard to have everybody on board as well as the company who has these animals. So let me show you what these gerbils came with because I find this to be like Fascinating, this is great care. So we do have nesting material right here, Oxbow alfalfa hay. So alfalfa hay is really great for uh, animals that are hay-based. So this is only really for nesting. You don't see gerbils eating hay. It's not really a big part of their diet, but they do need fiber in their diets. Sometimes you'll see them mouth their hay, like put it in their mouth, carry it around, and then either like destroy it near their nest or just place it in their nest. It's really cute. I've seen that happen at the rescue. We have a shifter right here for sand, just because they do use sand and this person does have a sand jar. We also got 
one of these, which I don't need this one. This one's really flimsy. I like the more uh, industrial ones. This is very interesting here. This is a bird perch, but gerbils can climb on this, especially if you know how to display it in your tank. But I thought that was very fascinating. And gerbils, they do not need plastic. Ceramics great, wood is great, no plastic in their enclosure. There is two exceptions. Acrylic, which is very strong plastic material, and also sometimes there is acrylic water bottles, which is a much harder plastic and it's not a flimsy plastic. This does have plastic. This is plastic, this is not a natural material, so I would never give this to gerbils. I see gerbils get this specific peanut hive from Petco more often than not. It's very bad, especially if they accidentally ingest it. Now this bundle of sticks, I never see any animals go for this. This is more like rabbit. I don't even see guinea pigs go for this. I actually gave um, a bundle of sticks to my guinea pigs when I had guinea pigs for fostering, never touched it. So it's just, I guess, a great fire starter if those of you who did buy this, um, if they don't use it, use it for something else. Sometimes I see people use aquarium decor inside of hamster and gerbil tanks. And I would say don't because the material that's used, if they chew it up, it can have paints. Like it is sealed for aquarium use, but for rodents, it is not appropriate. Do not use it. Same with fake reptile moss that's glued to hides, mainly for reptiles. Reptiles aren't gonna chew it up. Animals that are foragers, that pouch stuff, grab nesting material, they will try to destroy it, all right? And that's so bad for them. This right here, not appropriate, and I will just be donating it because it should be used as an aquarium hide, not for gerbils. Also, these are too small of a hole. Like, yes, there's a hole under here, but th there's no reason to have this in there. If you want fancy decor, like I said before, ceramic, not plastic, polyester, you name it, don't do that. Here is a small, I would consider dwarf size hide. It's been chewed up a lot. This isn't bad, but at the same time, it's not big enough, especially for two really fat boys. And these boys are chunky. Uh, this is another one where it's just, it's great for dwarfs, it's not good for like gerbils. Our boys are really big, like females or thinner. Yeah, I can feel like this is a good fit, but like this, this is really small and there is no escaping. So if they do happen to get stuck in here, this could cause panic. And like I say, for hamsters, don't use anything smaller that's considered a dwarf size hide because yeah, they could just get stuck in here if there's no open bottom to escape and burrow under. So this, nah, I would not use for gerbils at all. Now we have plenty of water bottles and my understanding is this person had a lot of gerbils. So maybe they don't have any more gerbils after this and that's why they donated like everything, which is understandable. But we got like a, forgot the size. Then we got just a regular eight ounce bottle. Then we got one of these, which I actually like using these. These are really great. I hope that it does come with the back because if it doesn't then it's basically useless but i do like this style water bottle right here then we got this one which i believe this is from a tiny tail i should know i have unboxed them all when i take in surrenders i usually tell people that um if they are hides or things that are heavily chewed uh, on don't donate them to us especially since we probably would not use them and in this case no this is useless uh wow oh my god they really, ow, 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 ow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, I don't know if I touch metal. Oh, that is metal sticking out. Okay, well, I just got stabbed with metal. One moment, um, let me just make sure I'm not bleeding. I should probably go clean this, but yeah, there is a um, heavily chewed kebab right here from Petco, which actually none of my, I mean, not from Petco, but from online, none of my gerbils or hamsters ever use this. So when we got donated a bunch of these because I had them on the wish list. Nobody used them. So I'm really surprised to see that your gerbils or that their gerbils use them. This is chewed to death. We don't need this. So we don't need this. Definitely don't need this. This could be thrown out. They're probably not gonna chew it up anymore. And especially since if they chew it up for a little bit and then they don't touch it again, they're bored with it. So it's a good idea to just put this in your fireplace or throw it out. Here's the brush. So we're not gonna need that. We could just donate that. A lot of items that we get donated if they are able to be used for other purposes, we just donate them because we already have a bunch of stuff at the rescue. And the issue that I'm having with right now is we have too much stuff at the rescue. So I've been trying to sort through it, trying to put it up for sale and or I'm just trying to donate it to local Goodwill because we just can't use some of these things. There is a hammock in here. This is not appropriate to be using. Cloth is a no for gerbils. They will chew it up and I'm really surprised that this wasn't heavily chewed. But as you can tell right here, they tried chewing these 
these and these will be chewed like instantly. So this is just gonna be washed and then donated to my rescue friend who has rats that use hammocks like this. And there is also a really tiny playpen. The height of this is probably not even a foot. It doesn't look like a foot at all. It's nine inches, so gerbils, great jumpers. So having a playpen that's only nine inches, they can jump over that. But just a possibility that if you do come across a playpen like this, you could repurpose it for DIY bin cages. So there are some ceramic dishes here. It looks like we got a few reptile ones. So you got like the two green reptile ones right here, which we could use. This is what I mean when I ask people to please donate and clean out your stuff because I did not know this was in here because sometimes we just put donations in a corner and then we sort through them later. This one kind of dirty dusted, but yeah, just pl please don't do this. Please clean your stuff. Uh, let's see here, someone's hair. I assume this might have fallen in, but yeah, we have someone's uh, toy chip right here. But it looks like they have a bunch of chew toys, which is great because these aren't chewed on. Oh, well, except for this one, this is chewed on, but it's not too bad. But yeah, whenever we get chew toys, we just make sure that they can be reused. And I'm a little worried, are these chew toys or are these just children's building blocks? Because you don't want to give them just random blocks because it might not be safe wood for them and the dyes on them might not be safe, but these might be safe for gerbils and hamsters, but like I've never, seen chew toys like this. I will probably look online first to see if there is chew toys that are in this shape. If not, they will just be put into my fireplace. We have some healthy select millet sprays. These are completely fine to be using and the best by date is next year, so that's good. We do have Oxbow Essentials hamster and gerbil. I would even use this for gerbils. Now, I do know that they did increase, I think by 1% for their protein, but I would not use a hay-based diet and hay is the number one ingredient in here. Timothy grass meal. They did have sunburst in here. Let me just make sure the expiration date is good. It is. And then this one also is good. So there's two of those. I don't know when any of these foods inside of here expire. I'm just going to use the container because my previous one had an ant infestation and it was not secure. So I just decided I didn't want to use it anymore. And so I will just make sure to throw all this out to put new treats in. And for those at home, I would recommend putting stickers on top of here. That way you know when the treat expires. So by the time you use that one up, rotate it, put a new sticker on with a new expiration date. That way you know when it expires and to use that treat first. For the sand that I assume is currently being used inside the enclosure, we got Repta Sand, all natural terranium sand. Never use calcium sand from the reptile section. All we use natural. And those were all the items. Now there was some in there that I just would never use with gerbils. But this person had extraordinary care and took a lot of consideration into creating a natural environment for her gerbils. Because what is currently in there is great. However, there's one thing I wanna talk about before we go here. Metal grid wheels. Don't ever use them. For hamsters, you guys have heard me talk about metal wheels. Besides it's being terrible and squeaky and I absolutely hate it. For gerbils, even though they do not run the risk of bumblefoot, they do run the risk of getting their tails damaged cut off. I have a story to tell and it's not a pretty story. So this is just a uh, trigger warning. A gerbil ended up dying because of a metal wheel like this. I don't know if it was the tail got stuck in the grids or the tail got stuck in the hole here because there is a gap right here. You can't really see it, but I can see it where if your gerbil were to somehow cause a freak accident where they got their tail stuck in between and another gerbil is running on this because this is the 12 inch. And if you have two gerbils, you should at least have two separate wheels or one large wheel. That way they can both run on it at the same time. One of them was running. The other one got their tail stuck and it broke the tail and I think the tail fell off or was still attached to the gerbil or degloved or something like that. But the unfortunate part was because the owner was not aware of what had happened, she came back and found out that her other gerbil ended up eating the other gerbil after that whole thing. So I think it went, gerbil's tail was in the wheel when she discovered it and it was just an unpleasant sight. Yeah, I don't I don't like these wheels at all. Even if they don't get Bumblefoot, there is a high risk that there is injury caused by these wheels. So the double stand wheels, I absolutely hate because it's not just gerbils that are getting stuck and tangled, but long haired Syrian hamsters, when they use this, their fur gets stuck in here, rips it right off. So there is just 
oh, there's been horror stories about this. Discontinue the use of these, all right? They rust, they squeak, they're not great. Why would you even think that it feels good running on this? Like solid wheels, guys, solid wheels. So this got replaced with a Night Angel 11 inch wheel. By the way, Night Angel's coming out with an extra large 12 inch wheel, which is fantastic because I actually thought the large wheel was a 12 inch, but it turns out it's just 11.4 or six or something like that. The gerbils are having fun inside of their enclosure. They are on the chunkier side. I have taken care of some chunky male gerbils before. It's not that they're overweight, it is just their genetics. Sometimes when male gerbils are of a certain age, they will hold and put on a bunch of fat and they might never ever lose it. So you just gotta make sure that you're not overfeeding, causing any complications. Go to your vets for just maybe a yearly checkup with these guys, because these guys can live upwards of five years. These guys, because they're from an accidental litter, I don't know how long they will actually live for. Hopefully they'll be adopted here very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the surrender intake, please leave a like, show support, leave an algorithm comment down below. And if you're new here and like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys around in the next video. Thank you again. Bye.